Welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. And before we kick off this episode 9 mid-season one-hour special, I just have a really cool announcement for all of you. Uh, so next Tuesday, that'll be January 25th. Had to check my calendar. January 25th, Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. We will not have an episode. However, myself, Waldo, Griff, and Ryan are all going to be at my house. Ryan's going to be cooking, and we're going to do a live stream on the YouTube channel. A lot of you have had a ton of questions, just a bunch of different things you want us to go over that are kind of hard to fit into um, the videos. So if you come hang out that night, we are solely dedicated to answering your questions and hanging out with you. So once again, that's going to be Tuesday, January 25th, Tuesday, January 25th, at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, yeah, so that's when we'll be there. Thank you all for the support. We really appreciate it a ton. And uh, yeah, so welcome to the one hour mid-season special. There's fish catches this whole time, a super sick recipe, and kind of ends with a bang. So thank you and enjoy. When anglers think of trophy fisheries and dream destinations, most think of untouched locations far away from civilization, but not us. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is a mecca of crappie fishing opportunities. These waters are home to the biggest crappies across the ice belt, and maybe even the Midwest. Our goal is simple, to document the catch and release of as many trophy caliber crappies as possible in one ice season. Along the way, we hope to educate you on how to catch the biggest crappie of your life. Joining me again this season, two of the best ice fishermen in the country, Adam Griffith and Matt Waldron. With the help of wild game cook, Brian Pinkala, we will also show you new and creative ways to prepare fish like you've never seen before. The ice season is here and we're ready to rock. Welcome back. This is season two of the Crappie Chronicles. Welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. I'm your host, Adam Bartusek. And uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who reached out to me. Uh, I'm feeling much better now. And we're definitely ready to get back after it with episodes. So today is Saturday, January 15th, I believe. And this is episode 8 or 9. I have definitely lost track at this point in time. Um, but we're definitely getting back after it with all the episodes. We're fishing lakes within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis because that's where we believe the biggest crappies live and we're chasing giants. With all that said, we also have all of our new merch has been released. So if you're looking to get some, some of the sizes are starting to run out. It's going quick. We don't have a ton of stock of it. So if you want it, you definitely need to get it now. Uh, this weekend, myself, Waldo, and Pinkala are also taking part in the Clam Trap Attack ice fishing tournament. Uh, so we had a decent day today, but not nearly as good as the others. So we got to pick it up for tomorrow. But uh, Waldo and I did get out fishing today, and it's super post frontal. There was a huge snowstorm yesterday, high pressure, and the fish were flying. So I'll put some of the footage in now so you can see it but it was really hard to film because the fish were just moving so insanely fast, but I'll drop it in now. When I slay it, they show up. 
more behind me to be honest. Oh, now we're marking one. Oh, holy sh Okay, hello. Dropped down and a bunch of them appeared. I got one too. Ooh, mine feels really good. Oh, not a tank, but ooh, a good one. Well, Waldo and I struck out on our first lake this morning, just popped out here and we are marking them. Look at how beefy that thing is. We're gonna get a measurement on them quick because we're fishing that fish donkey tournament and we want to beat Sobe. So, I gotta get this thing submitted. So I can at least get on the board. Got to get a few 10, 11 inches down. All right, we got a video. We're gonna put this guy back. See you, buddy. Boom. Done. There we go. I got a good one on right now. No, another little guy. No little eater. Cookie cutter eaters. I'm actually using a drop kick with some old Euro larvas that I just did not take off. So there is a chance that if they're eating Euros, Waldo might be having to make a gas station run. But let's hope that's not the case. Bart and I right now are bouncing around a basin. I know we haven't done a real good job of explaining what we're doing, but we just got on them. So we've been, yeah, yeah. It's just us right now, so we've been kind of all over the place. Here we go, here's another mark, that's a good mark. Oh, no, 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 no. Missed him. Just got crushed. on that spoon. Come here, buddy. Oh, these things are so thick. There's another one down there. There's several down there. They have a barrier. They, they won't go above like that halfway mark. They just won't do it. If you can get them before it, they'll eat. Yeah, that's a good eater right there. And they are stacked again, right below me. Let's go. I switched up to a white three millimeter drop XL. I'm using the two pound frost fluorocarbon right now. And I went super finesse on them. And I think, what, did you do the opposite, Bart? Yeah, and Bart did the exact opposite. So we're not really sure why these fish are biting what they're biting, but I think this is, uh, I think we just finally got on a school that'll stay for us. Got another. This guy's a little guy. That is uh, definitely a baby. There we go. That was a hook set. That was a nice one. Good eater. Put them right there for now. So I can get back down there and catch those fish. Yeah, just a small little three millimeter drop XL with the, the white with the pink head one and a white plastic. 
here we go. Oh, that's a good one right there. There's a nice crappie right there. That is a tank. There we go. That is more like it. Can you grab my phone? Okay, guys. Just stuck this beautiful crappie here. Uh, right now, we're actually fishing a fish donkey tournament right now. So, we have to measure these fish. And let's see. You got to close the mouth. And he is touching 13 inches. Okay. So, I got picture number one done. A phone call coming in from Anna. <laughs> I got picture number two done. And let's see here. Now I have to get a release video. So I'll let you guys see him one more time. Beautiful 13 inch crappie. Right now Bart and I are just uh, bouncing around in the basin. Beautiful release. Okay, now I'm going to submit this fish fish has entered so right now is the uh, clam outdoors trap attack tournament and uh, we got a little challenge going on with Sylvie right now on the biggest crappie I think we're losing though so we, we've got to really uh, start <laughs> moving around quite a bit more but pretty much what we're doing is there's a big inside turn where deep water pushes up and uh, we're just bouncing around pretty much just trying to pepper holes and it really sucks because these fish are flying so much. It's really hard to stay on top of them, but we got a couple good eaters here out of that school of fish. Um, and yeah, I think uh, we're gonna be doing some cooking tonight. Uh, Pinkala's got a pretty cool recipe out here. But yeah, I think uh, we're just gonna keep moving and grooving, covering water as best we can. It's, uh, it's gonna be kind of tough right now just because these fish with these high pressure and bluebird skies they don't want to sit still and it seems like they're very shy of us getting near them with the truck so um every time we get close to fish it seems like they just vanish on us again we'll catch one or two out of a school and then we have to drill another 20 or 30 holes before we get on top of the school again so we're going to keep bouncing around keep moving and grooving switching up plastics just to see if we can hopefully park on these fish and they just stay for once but it doesn't seem like they want to. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's a good one. Ah. <laughs> no. Well, we uh, we finally got back on the school, and uh, they're pretty finicky. But you know, it uh, it took us forever to finally find them again. I mean, it, it took was, us long enough that Pinkala is now here. Yeah, Ryan's now here. <laughs> um, but Ryan did bring bait, so he's a real MVP. Even though it doesn't seem like that it doesn't matter, but. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it has been one of the tougher days just because of staying on top of fish has just been a chore today. So, yep, so I'm going to get this guy registered quick. Boom. Okay. Turn it around. And we're going to get a release now. Perfect. She just swam away. Very nice. We finally found a school of fish that doesn't want to fly away from us at 100 miles an hour. Um, and so now we're just, we pretty much just peppered this area with some holes so we can bounce around a little bit, but it seems like they're just meandering around. Um, I've got another good mark on the bottom right here. Looks like that one was just but swimming we're going to get back to fishing. Yeah, we're going to get back to fishing. It's, we got sunset now. Yeah, we finally got a really good bite window going. So we're going to try to stay warm. We're going to bounce around a little bit. We got another line now, which is super important. Hooked up. Finally. Jeez. I don't know. He's getting angry at the hole, but...
Just a regular one. But I just got out here, finally caught one. Let these guys do all the hard work today. I literally just showed up with some spikes and was like, where are they at? And uh, just caught that one. So I had a lot of lookers come up and they just wouldn't eat. I don't know what the deal was. I tried putting some spikes on my jig. I just got a little drop kick with a whammy on it, all white. Uh, yeah, I don't know, pretty sweet. I'm gonna let them go. Um, not gonna register this one for the derb. Not gonna kid you on that one. Get them back, but sweet. All right, sounds like things are starting to pick up maybe. The sunset thing at least gives us a little bit of confidence that they might start to chew. And uh, whatever, I'm gonna get back down there. Looked like there was a couple more marks. We'll see when I drop back down if they already left me, but, and they're gone. And now we are back at Waldo's house, uh, just getting ready to cook some grub, and we're gonna have another awesome cooking segment from the one and only Ryan Pinkala. And today, I, he's got something really special for you. This is one we've been holding on to. It's an extremely unique recipe, and I think you're all going to very, very, very much enjoy it. And then throughout this weekend, we're gonna get back after it. We're chasing an 18 incher, and uh, those don't just come by with us sitting at home, so we gotta put in the work. But first, we're gonna show you a really cool recipe, so let's get after it. All right, guys, what's up? Um, I barely made it out for like two hours to fish with these guys, and it sounded like they were grinding all day, and it sucked really bad. So I'm kind of stoked that I missed that, but I came, caught a couple at the end, and uh, it was pretty fun till we left, but we're back at the uh, house now. We're getting ready to cook, and today's recipe is gonna be really cool. We're doing something that's kind of unique, actually, so we're actually gonna make a crappie Juicy Lucy burger. And this is not gonna be like a crab cake kind of fish burger type thing. This is gonna be a straight up crappie burger. Super, super cool. It's gonna be pretty easy. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps to do it. Um, it's really just the couple of us here. Griff's not with us this weekend. Um, he's actually out guiding right now. So if you guys want to get out with Griff, he's guiding the rest of the winter season. Um, here's all his info right here. Uh, get a hold of him as soon as you can. He's booking up fast. I know he's got a lot of people giving him calls and stuff trying to get out with him. Um, he's super affordable, really great guide. He loves teaching people. So get out with him and uh, you're not going to regret that. He's going to put you on some big fish anyway. But we're gonna get into this right now, and I'm gonna show you how to do everything. This is gonna be a good one. Here we go. Check it out. Okay, so for this one, it does take a little bit of equipment for this one. So I'm gonna use a meat grinder for this. We're gonna actually grind all these crappie fillets. Um, you could just do this by hand, like mince it up really fine and just keep running the knife through it, trying to get as, as fine of a grind as you can but you don't want to use a food processor for this. The goal here, we're using kind of like a medium dye on the uh, grinder. We don't want the fish to turn into mush essentially. So we're trying to hold some of the texture with the size that we're grinding it through. So if you did it in a food processor, it's almost just gonna puree it. And that's not what we want for this. We want it to hold structure. Okay, so I'm gonna grind this fish through um, just one time. Um, so if you, depending on what type of grinder you have, some are more powerful than others. This one is not like crazy. Um, powerful so we're gonna grind it through and I will have to kind of use the plunger to go through it But you just don't want to mash it in there super hard because the fillets these ones are not like half frozen even They're all thought out if you're doing it when they were slightly more frozen. That's actually better um, Just it won't mash them up quite as much But we'll run these through really really quick and uh, I'll show you what it looks like once it's ground and then what we're gonna do with it All right, so we got this fish totally ground up. As you can see, it's still kind of got some smaller chunks to it. It's not just totally mashed. Um, and that's what we want. So we're just gonna put this aside for now. I'm gonna clean up the grinder really fast and then we'll come back to this right now. All right, so got all this ground. We got the grinder taken care of and everything. So what we're gonna do here, the goal is to make this almost entirely out of, well, pretty much all crappie. So, any kind of meat you grind, really fish isn't that much different um, than you know any other ground meat. So it does have a higher moisture content, things like that. So we ground it, it is kind of like a wet grind, I'll say. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of these catch and cook seasonings again today. Um, the one that we're really gonna lean on is this, um, this smoked salt. It's called campfire. It's got kind of a smoky flavor to it, but you can use any kind of salt, really. The goal here is to put salt and then we're gonna mix this. And we're gonna mix it for like probably about three minutes. Really, really hard, I'm just gonna use a fork and mix it. And what that's gonna do uh, is gonna pull a process called protein extraction. So any protein, if you agitate it a lot, it's gonna start to get really, really sticky. 
And that's what we want with this. So we're not gonna be adding like a bunch of fat to this, anything else, even though this fish is super lean, we're gonna use that process to essentially make it sticky enough to bind together to make a patty. And uh, we're gonna do it right now. Like I said, it's gonna take about three minutes probably of really mixing hard and we're good to go. So I'm gonna add salt to it. That kind of accelerates the process of this protein extraction. And that's it. It sounds kind of technical, but it's really easy. We're putting salt in here and we're gonna beat it up with a fork. All right, so we're getting super close. I've been mixing this for maybe about two minutes now. And as you can see, it's kind of already turned into a very sticky consistency. So when you start pulling it, it starts sticking together quite a bit actually. So like I said, we're gonna give about one more minute. And once we get to that point, we're gonna add a little bit more seasoning and just a little bit of oil. And uh, then we're gonna start making these patties. So I, I don't know, I'm trying to make this process seem like it's very simple because it really is. I literally just added salt and I'm just mixing it together till it starts to get sticky and then we're gonna finish seasoning it up. But give it about one more minute. It's just a process. We just need to make the meat go through this protein extraction deal, and uh, that's really it. Super easy. All right, so we got this about the consistency that I want. So the last step, so now all that's in here is the smoked salt, which gives it a, like an awesome flavor actually. Like it smells great right now. But I'm gonna use this white out seasoning too, and this is a garlic based seasoning. Um, so that's all we're gonna season this with, is the smoked salt and this garlic seasoning. So I'm gonna pop this open, season it. And we don't wanna go too crazy because the fish takes whatever you season it with pretty easily and uh, it's gonna be mixed in. So it's not like we're just seasoning the outside of a filet here. So about that much is good. And then I just have a little bit of olive oil here and I'm only gonna add maybe like a tablespoon of this. And the only reason I'm doing this is so once we make the patties, they're just kind of smooth on the outside. So right now this fish is very sticky and I just wanna make sure that they're like turned into a patty at the end. So I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of that, just a little bit, and then just go ahead and mix it in. And this doesn't have to be for like a super long time like we just did. This is just gonna be just to incorporate everything. And then I'll show you how to make the patties. I got a piece of parchment paper right here. I'm gonna lay it out, make the patties, put them on here, and I'll show you how we get the cheese inside. And then we're gonna cook them up. Okay, so I'm gonna start patting these up and the cheese we're gonna put inside is just these singles, these like cheese-like product type things. The reason we're using this instead of some like really nice cheese is this melts insanely good. So the goal here is to make the fish kind of the star of this whole thing. So the cheese is kind of just extra. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff it with this just because we want the gooeyest inside possible. So this is the kind of cheese that you'd wanna use for this. You could experiment with other stuff but if you want the inside to just be molten cheese lava, go with these. All right, so I'd recommend just putting a little olive oil on your hands. And the only reason for that is because this is super sticky and it will stick to your hands really, really bad. And the goal is to patty them up into just individual patties like this. And I'm gonna put them on this parchment paper. And they don't have to be formed really well right now. So the, what I'm gonna do is take two patties, put the cheese in between, and then make it into one. So I'm just gonna portion them out basically into however many burgers I wanna make and then we'll bust that cheese up and get it inside. Okay, so we got these all portioned out. We got enough here to do six burgers, so we got 12 patties basically. So what I'm gonna do is take these pieces of cheese and this is something you kind of got to do one at a time instead of laying them all out. So because this is sticky, we'll peel it off of the paper. So we have this. And then what I'm going to do is put the cheese in the middle. So I'm going to basically do three of these pieces, which is all you really need. And the goal here is to seal this completely. So now I have a second patty and they are kind of thick. So what I'm going to do is lay them over the top and then using the like your oiled hand so it's not sticking, we're just work the side of it. And all that's going to do is seal it inside. So there's gonna be a pocket of cheese in the middle and as these cook, the steam's gonna melt that cheese. And as you do this, the oil that we put into the mix, which was just like a tablespoon, will keep these super smooth and will make really nice patties. So that's all you gotta do for that. I mean, you don't have to work them like too much. You don't gotta go crazy with it, but that's basically one done one. So we'll do that with the rest of them and then we'll have a bunch of them and all we gotta do is cook them up. Oh. 
So these are done. Um, like I said, these are just crappie meat with the cheese inside and then both these two catch and cook seasonings. Um, like in the corn dog one that we did before, if you want to try this stuff out, this stuff's super cool. Um, we're still running that discount code. So it's right here. It's BART10 if you want to get 10% off. Just use the link that's in the, uh, the description right below this video and that'll take you right to the site. You can order that stuff on there. It's super cool. They have several different seasonings. Uh, they have one other one that we're not using here and then all that breading too. So if you're into that stuff, check it out. Um, we're gonna take this stuff over to the stove right now. So I'm just gonna keep it on this paper, put it on a board. We'll go over there a couple minutes and we're gonna be chowing down. All right, so we're just preheating the pan. I wanna get it decently hot, but not like smoking. We don't need it like ripping hot like a cast iron or anything. I'm just gonna put like maybe a half a tablespoon of oil in there. Um, they do have oil on the outside of them and we're not trying to like deep fry these or anything. We're just trying to brown them on either side. And the fish will cook super, super fast and the cheese melts, I mean, just as fast as the fish cooks. So these only take maybe about I don't know, two minutes on each side in the pan. And the nice thing about this is it doesn't splatter like crazy like if you're cooking a beef burger or something. Um, yeah, they're super easy to cook and they don't make like a bunch of smoke, which is bonus. So this pan is getting hot. Give that one second and then we'll drop it in. And I'm gonna turn it to high, okay. And that's the wrong burger, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Waldo's kitchen. I don't know what I'm doing here. Not really. And the pan is now heat preheated. And like I said, we don't want it like ripping hot. So that's why when I dropped it in, it didn't make like a crazy amount of noise. We want to start them kind of in a little bit cooler pan because they do cook really fast and we don't want to overcook the fish. So we'll do four in there and then we got two more. So a little batch, a little batch here. Come here. Hey, hi. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. There we go. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> We're biting the dead <laughs> cat. All right. Yeah, that's right. Get up in there. Yep. Pink, who's your new cooking? Who's your new cooking buddy? Sadie. Sadie is the uh, the assistant here. Sue chef. Just waiting for anything she's needed for. <laughs> I'm about it. Good assistant. Oh yeah, top notch. Thank you. So okay. Hey, yeah. hey. You want to just stir see? those, stir those around? Yeah. All right. So the fish is cooking. You can actually see the line, like where it's cooking. So when it gets about halfway up, you want to flip them. Um, this isn't like where we're trying to cook it entirely on one side. So we'll flip them over. They start to get a little color on them, and the second side is where we're going to get that real good browning. So put it on that. The goal is just not to overcook them. So this is exactly what we want them to look like. No. We're going to one of my lakes tomorrow. Oh yeah, we are going to one of Bart's lakes tomorrow, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. It'll be interesting. We're kind of bouncing around Bart's area now, so he's the one taking us everywhere. And it's well, probably, he's, probably he's a can bad blame you. It probably, yeah, sucks. Prob probably a bad <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going in fully committed. He's guaranteeing an 18 tomorrow, so. That's all I needed to know. We'll see how this one goes. <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. Just the three of us tomorrow. No Griff. That's a major... That's like, a, people don't understand how big of a deal that is. Yeah. No Griff is a problem. Like, if there were seven crappies in a lake, Griff would catch six of them, only because the other one would just die. And then that's it. That's all the fish that are caught. That's what we're going for tomorrow the one that's gonna die, because we can't catch the other six. <laughs> <laughs> so these ones, they do get a little bit of color on them because there's really not much fat other than that oil we put in there. They really don't get like a big charred outside on them. So this is about what you're looking for. Um, the whole thing will just be kind of opaque like that. And the middle, you can feel it's nice and soft. That cheese is all melted in there. So I'm gonna pull these ones off, get the last two in, and then we'll plate one up and show you what it looks like. Does your sous chef approve? We good? Decent. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna plate one of these up quick. I got a nice little brioche bun here. Um, and we did make some sweet potato fries in kind of the background or whatever, but I got some mayo I'm gonna put on 
just a little bit on the bottom of the bun and on the top. And a Juicy Lucy typically is a fairly plain burger and all it does is have some pickles on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I got some bread and butter, little pickle slices here. And uh, these actually go really, really well with fish. So I'm just gonna load up the bottom bun with these. Just like that. And then we'll take a nice fatty, plunk it right on top. And that's that. Uh, I'm gonna put some fries on here really quick and then we're gonna cut this thing open. And I'm gonna show you exactly what they look like on the inside. Bingo. So that's exactly what we wanted right there. That fish burger is cooked awesome. You can see it all the way through. The cheese is just absolutely lava. Definitely gonna wanna blow on one of these. These are notorious for being uh, pretty brutal to eat, but if you cut it open first, it's not gonna bust all over your face, but. Mm. <laughs> Hell yeah. How burnt are you right now? <laughs> I mean, it's hot, I'm not gonna lie. But it's super good. The flavors of those seasonings in that meat is awesome. The fish is super light. So it's not like eating like a really greasy burger. Um, yeah, the texture is amazing actually. Like I said, grinding it instead of running it through the food processor is definitely a really good move to try. Um, even if you're trying to make other things, like you can see where you could take like a patty like this and put different things in it, maybe make it into a sausage, something like that. Really, really good option. Um, not dense, there's actually little like pockets in the meat and everything, so yeah, holds together awesome. Nice juicy burger, not dry at all. So give this one a shot. Like I said, putting them together is really easy. You can mess around with different types of cheese, different types of stuff on the bun. This is a winner all day. Give it a shot, I think you're gonna like this one. Mm -hmm. No, but we need an unbiased party, right? Where's our unbiased party, Ryan? We got a guy right here. This is our boy. You gotta grab a bite. All right, all right, all right here, here you go. go. Yeah, we found him on the street, just down at the local place. Oh, there we go. That was a oh, good yeah. slow-mo shot. It's really good, really good. It's very hot, though. <laughs> <laughs> you would have ordered that, though. I absolutely would have ordered that anywhere. Heck yeah. All right, give this one a shot. I think you guys would like this one, like I said. Anybody could do it, even if you don't have a meat grinder. Just grab a knife, just start mincing that stuff up, get it really fine. Mix it, the pro it's really the process of this one. So using that salt and mixing it a lot to get the protein extraction deal, Google it. Dude, I filmed this. There was like four ingredients. Yeah, I mean, maybe, you don't even maybe, have stuff. maybe four. Ma yeah, like I said, salt, use any kind of salt. Like we use that smoked one, which is really bomb in this, but you need some salt and then like a seasoning that you like and cheese. This is way simpler than anything we've ever done and by far probably the best one. I agree. I'm about it. Okay, so tomorrow. Tomorrow we are once again chasing giants. And uh, I think the exciting part about tomorrow for me anyways is tomorrow we're going to a lake that like I've grown up fishing since I was, I couldn't even tell you. Um, and the worst part is, I've never really got into them. And I know how many freaks live there. And you're gonna get a go you're gonna get to come along for the ride. Uh, we're gonna try to figure it out tomorrow. We have low pressure, clouds, snow. We have every recipe that we want for freaks. And this lake has a lot of them. So, yeah. Tomorrow's gonna be cool, and it's gonna be a total learning experience for not only me, but uh, Pinkala, Waldo, and all of you, because we have absolutely no idea how this is gonna go, but only way you get a big one is swinging for the fences, and that's what we plan to do. So, these burgers are insane, so we're gonna eat some of these, get some rest, and we will see you bright and early in the morning.
Good morning and welcome back. Obviously we are out fishing. We are out on the lake. Um, today is going to be pretty special. We got two days ago we had a big snowstorm. Yesterday was high pressure. Right now the pressure's bottomed out. We're going to have a few different snow squalls coming through today. Um, we got like the best conditions ever other than the wind is absolutely gassing. So that's going to suck for audio. But today is really special to me because we're on a lake that I have fished like my whole life. I have a lot of history out here. Um, there are freakishly large crappies in this lake, whites and blacks, and uh, today's like the first day I brought people here. So I got Pinkala and Waldo out here, and today's the day we try to figure them out. Um, we're out starting out in a basin right now, and uh, we're just gonna chase them around however long it takes. There are some of the biggest crappies I've ever seen in my life have come out of here, and uh, I think today is going to be special. Today is going to be a lot of fun. I get to spend it with two of my best buddies, and now we get to try to figure them out. So we're going to get to fishing. Let's do this. Uh, 16, 17. Boom! Yes, dude. There we go. Give me some. That's a nice one. Oh, Give me baby. some, baby. Get some. Woo -hoo -hoo. That one came in halfway down. And they're hitting it so hard you can't get a hook into them. I've never had that issue before. But it's an issue today, apparently. Oh, you went big, big. Okay, officially black, not the deal. Red and white, not too terrible. Yeah, I'm trying this flutter spoon. That's fine. I'm just telling you, I just put black down there and they were like, <laughs> good joke. Okay, let's do this. What would Griff do? Oh my God, not that. He would not have done that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just got taken to the house. Again. I need to put meat on this spoon immediately. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking, here's the bite, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Is that with a pinhead? Oh, yeah. Just throttled. Oh. They don't like this water spoon. I'm putting, I got, I got to put some meat on this or something. Just off to the side, but they're down there. Oh, How the hell does it need a battery? They're just off to the side, but they're like they're flickering in and out. Yeah, I got one. I'm marking one. There's one. What we got? Oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Sweet. All right, that's three for the derb. We're gonna have to improve a little bit, but. Well, it's in like a, it's like slush. Here's a good one, dude. Boom, baby. All right, we have a bucket of water. We're just gonna keep the fish in. We're gonna register and we get it back. All right, I'm gonna get some of these sent in. Did you see him hit it? It went like this. There we go. That's a Oh, you're bigger than I thought. Yeah, gave no effort. It's a nice, I don't know, probably 11. I'm gonna get him back. Very aggressive. On. Oh yeah, get up here. This is a real one. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's a good one. Yes! Look at that freaking deal. Boom, baby. All right. Let's get this derb going, boys. Oh, mama. Eesh. That was ugly. Oh. At least it's a big mark. Yeah, it is. Ooh. Oh, broke me off. Giant. Right at the hole, dude. He was right there. How big was it? The whole bottom of the hole was just white. There you go, Bart. That looks a little bit better. We're going to see when he gets to the hole if he gets a lot of... Sp Ooh, he came up. That's a bummer. It was a big, it was a big mark. I should probably pull the, pull the Vex out from now on. <laughs> yeah, like freaking absolute unit. Let's do this thing. Come on, baby. Sit, dude, this is a freaking giant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come here, baby. Come here. Oh, it's a real one. It's a freaking real one, baby. Whoa! <laughs> baby, give me some of that. Giant one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There we yes, go. Buddy. Look at how thick he is. Him. <laughs> Not as big as I thought, but Jesus, what a freaking unit. We found the whites. We did. Oh, find like the whites, one. find Look the that giant. That All right, we need the tape for this one. Just got this unit of a white crappie. So. I'm guessing it's a little over 14. I'm not quite sure. We're actually gonna register it in. We're fishing that fish donkey tournament. Waldo and I were trying to do well yesterday and it was not going good. But today, today's our day. Today's going good. We're hopping around in a basin right now and um, they are staying put. And they're, oh yeah, 15 all day. Yeah, baby. All day long, 15. So I gotta take a picture of it on the board, 15. Okay, and then I gotta take a selfie with it. And then I gotta do a video of the release. So we're gonna get this big one back. And um, yeah, we're gonna keep chasing freaks. There's a lot of them in here. So there's a nice 15 inch white. Boom. And we're off to the race. Give me some, dude. That was there a we freak. Go. There he is. That's a good one. That's a real one. Good one, Bart. Giant. Yep. Need ya, need ya. He's close already. He's like right here. Ooh, I'm scared, baby. Come on. Come on, honey. I already broke one. All right, here we go, here we go. I didn't see him. Just get ready. He doesn't want to come up, dude. It's a big one. There. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get him. Get him. Big one. Yeah, baby. Boom. Big white. Freaking right, boys! Yes! Ooh. Just smashed this big white. Came up, crushed the pinhead. I worked him up and down a couple times. He's flying up and down, and then just slacklined it. Stuck him. Sick. Absolutely sick. Yes! Is it, is it going down? It's starting to go Dude, down. Dude, it's freaking going. <laughs> the last five minutes have just been fish, fish, fish. Oh my God, fish. We need to register these. Oh, it's just like, it's nuts. All right, so I'm gonna register this thing. Look at that. Just draped on my whole arm, dude. That is a real crappie right there. <laughs> That's sick. And so got the pics, just need to do the video release here. Oh my gosh, it's a horse, dude. Look at the back on that thing. Bomb white. Deuces. Yes! That was sick! All right. 
punch this thing onto the leaderboard and let's get back down there. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Got it, got him. What are we dealing with here? Ooh, yeah, nice one, nice one, nice one, nice one. Boom. Heck yeah. See what he is. I don't think that one's going to help, but he got that thing. Look at that. Freaking right. 12 and a quarter, it looks like. I don't know if I need that. And a video. Yeah. On him. Freaking on him. Okay, a little bit of an update. It's about 11.30 now. Um... Yeah, it's been a good morning. Uh, we haven't really talked about it, but we're just on a small lake, uh, dirty water basin fishing. Uh, so all we're doing with that is truck trolling. We're driving around drilling a bunch of holes. And what we figured out that's really cool is these fish are schooling by size. So it makes it really easy for us to figure out if a school is even worth our time. Uh, we'll drop down, find a 12 incher, and uh, that's kind of when we're getting around those 14, 15 inch fish. But uh, right now we beat up those fish pretty well. We want to move around and go find some new ones. So we're gonna take a little break and just talk about our rod series because everybody's asking for like a little bit more of an in-depth breakdown of all three and we actually have a fourth now. So let's dive into these rods. Number one, Bart's Chronicle. So obviously this is my rod design for me and uh, you can get them all at Thorn or online. This is a 28 inch blank with a three inch medium light trip wire on it. So 31 inches total. Um, this rod is much more parabolic than most of our rods. So we use this for finesse fishing, tungstens, um, and yeah, just finicky fish, having a spring bobber is really nice for tricking them. Uh, and with all of our rods, you'll see a four and a half inch uh, wind grip handle. And we do that because we all hold our rods over the top. We don't pistol grip. Uh, it's better for jig movement, sensitivity, and everything. So Bart's Chronicle, great rod especially if you want to use it for or you need a rod for tungstens next we have got griff's chronicle so this is a 24 inch noodle rod um, as you can see schoolie this is our schoolie rod uh, waldo and griff use this mainly but they really like having that noodle tip for micro movements when using small tungstens uh, that's why you use a schoolie in general two pound line just really finessing fish. Just a really great rod for if you like to use like three mils or four mils, uh, maybe even smaller. So definitely a good one you want to check out. Next, you have seen us uh, actually just crush fish on the rivers with uh, this rod. This is Waldo's Chronicle. This is a 36 inch noodle rod. This rod is built for power fishing. Uh, it really excels in shallow water, but you can use it everywhere. Really good pinhead minnow rod or bigger tungstens. Uh, like we said, power fishing. So hole hopping, dropping the bait down and really getting after it. Uh, this rod is honestly awesome. And with both of the noodle rods, they're recoil guides. So <clears throat> out in the elements, step on it, whatever, they'll snap back into place and they don't freeze up as much. So really good rod. And now our fourth rod, new. We've been using it all year, you've kind of seen it, and uh, we just wanted to test it out and see how it is, but I'm gonna let Pink Hall talk about this. We're gonna spin the camera around and uh, release Pink's panfish rod. So super stoked to talk about this one. Uh, this is my custom rod, and uh, yeah, I mean, Thorn Brothers, super awesome. They literally will build any rod you can dream up. So, um, you know, I had this rod in mind. Uh, I was really wanted kind of a big gun rod. Um, and something that I love in a rod is super parabolic. So as you can see this one, it loads up right back to the freaking handle. So this has got an eight inch premium cork handle on it. Um, you can put spinning reels on it. You can put a spool, any kind of reel really, um, but it has a nice big grip. So if you're wearing gloves or something, there's something to hold on to. And uh, this thing, it's sick. It's an all carbon blank. It doesn't have a super soft tip uh, like you would get on a noodle rod. So this rod is really all about sensitivity. So when you're jigging a spoon or a bigger tungsten jig, you're gonna feel that bite rather than see it in the rod tip. Um, recoil guides on this thing, super slick. Uh, we got the custom pink wraps on the whole thing. 32 inch blank and uh, this, is a, this is a big dog. I mean, we've whipped some big fish on this already this winter. Um, definitely a sick multi-species rod. We're pretty much only using these for iFish Pros um, when we do use them for tip-ups, but uh, this is just a sick pinhead minnow rod, any kind of spoon. I'm stoked on this thing. I'm gonna go tie another one up right now and I'm probably gonna fish with this the rest of the day to be honest with you, because these fish are big and uh, I love to be able to just horse them in on a rod like this. So you don't have to be uh, too finessy with one like this. So I hope you guys check this rod out. 
check them out at Thorn Brothers on their website. Um, you can probably check them out in the store too, but it's just sweet to be able to build a rod like you just come up with in your mind and you're like, this is what I'm thinking. And the guys at Thorn are like, let's do it. So that's exactly what happened here and hopefully you guys like it. Let's go catch some giants. Let's do it. I mean, immediate. That's the wall. <laughs> oh, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're back on him. Hopped around a little bit. And, um, yeah, we found another school. And these fish school so tightly. And if you can see to my side, Pinkala has missed like five of them. And that is not to Pinkala's fault. Um, they. <laughs> They are so aggressive and hit so hard, you literally miss them. <laughs> they are just absolutely suicidal. It's getting later in the day. We're getting closer to sunset. I think we still got maybe an hour before legit sunset. But we've been driving around a ton, drilling a ton of holes. And for the past like two hours, every time we got on something that looked like we were on a school, it was like four inch perch, which was not lit. So now, we're kind of back in the area where we caught those two big ones earlier today. And we're just gonna post up. I think tonight, we're just hoping another bite window opens up and we can hole hop through the area that we started in and get on top of them again. Because if we find that school, it's going down. That is a good one right there. Yeah. Again. The other big one's still down there. I just got this beautiful white crappie. Absolute banger. Um, we finally got back on some fish. You know, we drove around for a long time. It was really hard finding them. Oh, here we go. Ooh. That looked heavy. It was heavy. I think he broke me off, actually. Oh my god. Broke off on a big one. But, that's a beautiful white crappie there. We're gonna get this one back. Um, I don't know, it's probably a 12 and a half, maybe 13 inch fish. Absolute beautiful fish. Released to grow some more big ones. Um, but, we kind of got back on some fish here. Uh, they're a little bit finickier than they were this morning, so we're having to coax them a little bit more. I still got big fish down there right now, but obviously I just broke off, so I'm gonna have to go retie. Um, but we're all, I mean, we're back to where we caught them right away in the morning. Um, but we're gonna keep bouncing around. It seems like there's a lot of big fish in this general area, so. I think uh, we're going to camp out in this spot for the long haul and see if we can't get an absolute giant for you guys. But I'm going to get my hands warmed up. i got to retie, and hopefully we can get another stud. Give me some, brother. Sick. Oh, yeah. It feels pretty good. No, it feels really good now. Oh, he's got me in the line. What? Well, then why are you reeling up? <laughs> I was trying to get out of the line because I didn't feel it for a second. Oh, yeah. Bomb. Bomb. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll just put the minnow down and then reel it back up. Thanks, Waldo. You're welcome, Bart. I thought you should catch one. I mean, I got two big ones today now. That's a good one. Yeah, real good one. Probably 14, 14 and a half. Just caught this beast white. Another good one. It's not as big as the first one. I don't think, I haven't measured it yet, but we gotta get this registered into this tournament as well. We're running out of time, but we have found some more big ones. 
that is what matters. Um, so I'm gonna start getting this guy measured and I'll talk to you guys. Oh yeah, 14, oh get over that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, right there. 14 and a quarter. 14 and a quarter for the measure. It's <laughs> it a four, counts. It's a 14, but in the tournament it's a 14 and a quarter. <laughs> so an absolute beast of a white crappie. And the thing is, there's way bigger ones out here. So we're gonna get it back. And um, I need to turn this video on quick. All right, getting him back. There he goes. Just a beast of a white. So we got that fish submitted. So basically what we did there actually, so we found these fish and you saw Waldo catch a nice one, lose a big one. And then, uh, yeah, that app's updating right now. There's a bite window happening. That's the one nice thing about it. It tells you when they're eating. Um, so, yep, here we go. Let me turn that on silent quick. Okay, so what happened there was we had found those fish. You saw Waldo catch a nice one and then break off a big one. We caught a couple, but like we were marking them and they were just stagnant. They would not move on any bait whatsoever. So we pulled out a little trick that Waldo and I did and hopefully this leads to a wicked bite tonight because when this bite's on, it's insane. We call it the blade, we call it blade jigging them. And what we do is we take this clam blade jig, put a full minnow on it and you just stroke it in the water column and they come up and absolutely inhale it. And that is exactly what this one did. Just crushed the full minnow. So I think that might be the way we need to get them to eat. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get after it. Oh, and um, everybody's been asking about these gloves. Uh, these are blackfish aired gloves and they're honestly like the best winter ice fishing glove I've ever used. Um, I have two pairs, so I'll wear one for a while, and obviously, like, as you're grabbing fish and stuff, they get a little wet on the outside, so the fingers will freeze a little bit, but you can just put them up in a heater, and they'll melt off pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, they're waterproof, the inside's super warm, your dexterity is great with everything. They're seriously the best, so if you want to check them out, a lot of people have been asking us about them. I'll put a link down below so you can, but sun's going down, giants come out at night, and uh, I think we're gonna stay here for a little bit and see if we can get an absolute magnum. And win this tournament. I wanna win this tournament. I'm getting close now. I'm coming for that guy in Canada. Right here, what we're fishing is, we've got a deeper basin out here, and it's not even that deep of a basin. It's like, I would say, right around 23, 24 foot. Not crazy deep. But where we are right now, the basin starts to come up and it makes like a big flat, almost like a feeding shelf right here where these schools are moving around. And while we're on top of this feeding shelf, we've been seeing just fish absolutely everywhere. Um, so what we decided to do was to give them something, you know, to target a bigger fish. And that's why we picked up the blade jigs uh, with the fathead minnows. Um, what we have found, at least, I mean, from Bart and I the past couple of years of doing this technique is that you really weed out, you'll still catch smaller fish, but you'll weed out a lot of those, you know, 12, 11 inch fish, and you'll start to catch a lot more of those 13s, 14s, and 15s on a bigger bait like that. Um, so right now what we're doing is we're just letting it sit down there when we get on top of these fish and we start just raising it up a little bit. You know, we're not doing a lot of crazy motions with it at all. Um, and it seems like that's really been the ticket, but right now we're on a 15 foot little feeding shelf. We're gonna keep bouncing around. It is bewitching hour right now. So we're gonna keep, you know, sending it. And I think something cool is gonna happen tonight. Things are going really well for us, so we're gonna get back at it. I gotta get a new fat head, and let's get another bomb. Your drag's just mega loose. I ended up tag. Yes! It's another bomb. Heck yes. That one came on the blade jig. This is one of Bart and I's favorite techniques when they're not going on jigging plastics, they're not going on you know jig heads and meat, it can get the job done. That is another stud. That one is shaped super weird. Just another beautiful fish. <gasps> And that one just looks weird. 
He's got scoliosis. Look at that. Yeah. Look what he blue with pink with the magnum. It's going down right now. All right, Waldo, let's get that one back. Okay. Another stud. Pink's hooked up with a good one right now. You got him, buddy? Nope. Need a hand? Yep. Okay, let's get this one down. I gotta give Pink a hand. Beautiful fish. Get that deucer all the way out. <clears throat> it was a magnum mark, dude. On a, just a drop kick with a whammy. Beautiful. This is a good one, dude. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. He's he right at the bottom of the ice. Crazy. All right, I'll just let you look. Oh, I just saw him. He's a tank. Get him, get him, get him. Boom! Give me some! Freaking what, dude? Boom! Yes! Yes! That's a tank, dude. Absolutely. Major upgrade. Let's go. It's going down, dude. It's going down right now. Bite window? What? Oh my gosh, I got another giant. Get a minnow, dude. These guys are blade jigging. Look at this. I got a drop kick just snooted in this thing. I worked him forever. He came up and down for probably five minutes. He just would not leave me, and he finally just sucked it in. It was not a hard bite at all. Oh, look at that. All right, I'm gonna grab the bump board super quick. I'm gonna get this one registered and we're gonna get it back. 14 and a half. Grab the selfie. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> and then we just gotta get the release shot. Oh my God, it's tall, dude. I can barely grab him. Look at that. That is a tank crappie. All right, video. That is a bomb going back. See ya. Yes! Boom, baby! We're coming for ya. We're coming. Huh? Yeah. Help? Uh, no, he ain't big. Oh, he's bigger than I thought he was. <laughs> just got this absolute unit of a black crappie uh things just started popping off uh the front is coming through we're supposed to get a little bit of snow tonight and i don't know it's just it it's chaos right now things are just happening um i switched over to a blade jig spoon well, it's not a spoon, but it's a blade jig. And uh, this one's just the white one. It's got a silver back to it. And we're just hooking fat heads right under the dorsal with it. Uh, Pink's still using a, uh, what, you're using a pinhead with some bait, some meat. Um, yeah, things are going. Let's get a measure on this guy, see how big she is. Fourteen. Fourteen. Beautiful fish. Absolutely. Give me some, dude. Unit. Let's get some picks. Heck yeah. And as you can tell, it is now night. Uh, we stayed out here like two or three hours thinking a night bite would turn on. We got into a really good flurry to end the night. Uh, and we're, we were hoping it was just going to continue, and it absolutely did not. It got terrible. Uh, I don't think we've grabbed a fish other than a little perch in two and a half hours. So, yeah, I mean... Needless to say, this lake definitely doesn't have a night bite, so it was good to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, great day uh, dissecting kind of a place I've fished a lot growing up and have done well on, but really dialing it in today with the guys. And I still think we have more to learn about here. Uh, 14s were really good today, and we got 115, but they're so much bigger in this body of water. And uh, Hopefully, we'll, we'll definitely be back, and hopefully we'll be able to show you what this place is truly capable of, uh, because it's really, really capable of just some world-class fish. But with that said, um, we're kind of done with this episode. I know me, Pinkala, and Griff are going to get after it tomorrow. He's back from Gaiden, and uh, we're going to be able to get after some more some more really big fish and you know like we've told you the ultimate goal now is to get an 18 on camera so we're gonna be chasing that we're heading to some new lakes and uh yeah should be pretty fun so thank you everyone for watching please be sure to like subscribe all the normal youtube stuff we really appreciate all the support and uh until next time we are on to the next one <laughs>